Praise the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. We ought to rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning, Damascus and Facebook family. Pray that we find you blessed and favored of God. We want to thank you for joining us this morning as we are gathered to lift up the name of Jesus in song and worship him and to hear a word that will help us as we continue this journey together. We encourage you to let somebody know that we are on and there is a word for the people of God. So we thank you again for being with us and now join in and let us worship him together. of the storms, the trials, the troubles of life, we have 
hope and we have help. As we come this morning, we honor you, we glorify and praise your name, for you are worthy. You've been mighty good. Lord, in this world, we are faced with many different types and sources of trouble. But we thank you that in the time of trouble, you shall hide us in the provision in your tabernacle. We thank you, God. We thank you, God, that you hold us when we're weary. You cover us when we're fearful. You strengthen us when we're weak. You encourage us when we're down. We thank you for that. As we come and lift up the bereaved families this morning, God, for the tragedy that happened this week and the family affected, we lift up the low family to you and others. We lift up more of those that have lost loved ones and are dealing with the sadness and, and the pain of that loss. We thank you, God, that we have hope and we have help. As we come, Father, we pray for the condition of not only our nation, but for our for this world war that belongs to you. We ask, God, that, that Lord, somehow, that the people of God would rise up and set a standard, a light, that will disarm the enemy and uh, stop him, Lord, and moving as he's moving. And you said if your people, which are called by your name, would honor themselves, pray, seek your face, turn from their ways, and you would hear from heaven and heal the land. And Father, our land needs healing. So I pray, God, that you would touch those that hold up the bloodstained banner, the, ch the children of God, Lord, that we would be a light in this dark world. We pray, Father, for those that are suffering with the sickness of uh, a different uh, ailments they're facing, not only with COVID-19, but, Lord, with other things that people are dealing with. We ask, God, that your hand of healing would move forth. And we thank you, God, that you would do those things because you are the healer. We thank you, God, for the wisdom that you give uh, the doctors and all this in this world, God, to make things move as efficient as they do. We thank you, God, for the wisdom, and we thank you, Father, that we know that all wisdom, all understanding, all knowledge, all ability comes from you. So we give you honor and glory for that. We pray now, Father, you bless our time together. Bless this word that about, that's about to come forth. Let it touch and pierce the hearts of the people. We do ask and give thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. And thank God. We have started a study in the book of Daniel for our Bible studies. And uh, as I was thinking about that, I stopped and I understood and understand that we're going in a different direction with our Bible study. But there's a message that stood out to me in Daniel chapter 1. And I want you to turn with me to that passage in Daniel, and we're going to read verses 1 and part of verse number 2. And uh, Daniel 1, 1 and 2 reads like this. During the third year of King Jehoram reign in Judah, King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon came to Jerusalem and besieged it. Verse number 2. The Lord gave him victory over King Jehoiakim of Judah and permitted him to take some of the sacred objects from the temple of God. I want to just stop right there. and That's all we're going to talk about this morning. And I want to focus on uh, verse number two. The Lord gave him victory and permitted him to take some of the sacred objects from the very temple of God. And when I looked at that, I want us just for a few minutes to awaken our awareness to the consequences of disobedience. As we understand the chastisement of God upon his people, that's what we're going to talk about, the consequences of disobedience. Amen. Amen. 
My brothers and sisters, we got to realize as children of God that there um, is a God that sits high and looks low. There is a God that judges all things. I, I know that it's hard to believe that sometimes as we observe the evil and the different things that we experience in life and in this world. But the truth is that, yes, there are some consequences to disobedience. Listen, be ye warned that God will judge our sins. Amen. There is a chastisement, a punishment that comes to the people of God from the hand of God because of their disobedience. I was listening to the Sunday school lesson this morning and it talked about the reason for uh, captivity and the different things that the people of God found themselves in. And the number one thing that always stands out is disobedience to God. Amen. God, listen, Nebuchadnezzar was not a godly man by any stretch of the imagination. He was a very evil, wicked king. But God allowed him and used him to chastise his people. Listen, it's very important that we understand that. I can imagine the astonishment of the people when Nebuchadnezzar came in and took over and just ruled and dominated and took them into captivity. I can imagine how they felt and, and how they were shocked by that uh, situation. But listen, I don't understand, you know, I know how we are and sometimes we wonder why things happen and we're shocked when certain things happen. But the truth of the matter is this, as we observe this passage and we research this passage, we understand that they knew what God had said. Isaiah, thousands of years earlier, had warned that any culture that uh, do not value the principles of God and refuse to obey the commands of God will find itself in collapse and in captivity. Actually, it was 2,600 years that this was prophesied before the nation of Israel. Listen, they were taken captive. Here they are now, 2,600 years later, in captivity because of disobedience to God. Listen, my brothers and sisters, they were taken in because they had fallen into immorality. They were taken captive because they were not administering justice. They were taken into captivity because they were worshiping false and idol God. They had made idols out of things that were not God. They were treating people unjustly and unfairly. They had fallen in blatant immorality. And God always warned his people about things that's coming their way. Because God always has a person. He has a prophet that will stand up and warn the people. He had Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and Zephaniah who had warned Israel about God's displeasure with them. God was not satisfied with their idolatry, immorality, and injustice. And that God was going to judge. The Bible says in Isaiah 5 and 20, you are doomed if you call evil good and call good evil. Destruction is certain when you call darkness light and light darkness. When right is considered wrong and what's wrong is considered right. When you claim, the Bible says, what is bitter is now sweet and what is sweet you call bitter. You are doomed, the prophet said to the people of God because they had gone about establishing their own righteousness and going about living life their own way. And here we find them in 600 BC, the powerful Babylonian captivity under the emperor Nebuchadnezzar invades Israel and take them captive. Oh, my brothers and sisters, I want you to remember this, point number one, these people lost their liberty, they lost their freedom, they lost their power, they lost their influence because they were not paying attention to what God was saying. I want to warn you, you better listen to God. 
You better listen to the word of God. When the word of God comes forth, you better take heed to the word of God because God sees everything you do and he knows everything you say. God is sitting high and looking low. They lost their freedom. They lost their liberty. They lost their power. They lost their influence. They lost their prestige. They lost their position because they failed to pay attention to the voice of God. You know, they thought because they were in charge and living large that they had it going on their way and they could do things like they wanted to. But I stop by to tell you, you cannot just do it your way. Amen. Psalms 82 tells us this, God presides over heaven's court and he pronounces judgment on the judges. Listen, he's talking about the righteous ones. He's talking about his children. I know we want to look at the world and we want to criticize the world. We want to put down the world. We want to blame the world for all the problems. No, no, it's not the world's fault. Listen, if the people of God would be a light, then darkness would not prevail. Have I got a witness here? Just think about it when you walk into your own house at night. When you turn the light on, what happens to the darkness? The darkness is dispelled by the light. My brothers and sisters, the people of God got to let the light shine if we got to change and, 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 and lighten the way. If we got to take away the darkness, we've got to turn on the light. If you're sitting with somebody, tell them, turn on the light. God presides over heaven's court and pronounces judgment on the judges. He's not talking about the world. He's talking about his children. How long will you judge us? How long will you hand down unjust decisions? How long will you show partiality? How long are you going to be prejudiced? Give fair judgment to the poor and the orphans. Uphold the rights of the oppressed and the defense. This is the word of God, Psalms 82. Asaph is writing this. This is Psalms 82. He said, listen. Give fair judgments to the poor and to the orphans. Uphold the rights of the oppressed and the defenseless. Rescue the poor and the helpless. Deliver them from heartless, evil people. Say it's because the leaders are foolish and they lack understanding. People are living in dark times. Listen to what he said in all the foundations of society are unstable to the core. Why? Because the people of God will not live the life of God before this world we're in. Because the people of God are doing their own thing. The people of God are not being an example, being the light. They're not being the righteousness of God in this world. The people of God are being prejudiced. They're unjust. The people of God are oppressing those that they should be lifting and helping. He said because the leaders are foolish, they lack understanding. People are living in dark times. And my brothers and sisters, if that's not the world we're living in, then I don't know what it is. Listen, they lost their liberty. Number two, God does not want us to be indifferent to the plight of the disenfranchised and the marginalized. Listen, you've got to stop looking down on others. You've got to stop holding your thumb on others. You've got to stop pressing others down. You've got to start lifting others up. You've got to start lifting your voice. Silence is not the answer. Silence is consent. Listen, you've got to speak up against the injustices in this world. You've got to stand up for those that's being oppressed that those are being put down, that those that's being misused and abused, those that's being prejudiced against. We have a responsibility to God, and God expects us to do the right thing. And I want to tell you something. If you don't do the right thing, God is going to judge you. My brothers and sisters, God is very concerned with the way we treat other people. God is very concerned with the way we treat each other. As a matter of fact, God is concerned about everybody. Jesus said in Luke 4 and 18, when he came and opened the book, he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty 
to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind. Send me to set at liberty those who are oppressed to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. My brothers and sisters, it's time for the people of God to come down from their high place, to come off their high horse, and come real with God. Because God sees what you're doing. God understands the motives in your heart. Because of this, my brothers and sisters, God allowed Nebuchadnezzar to come in and chastise his people. God allowed Nebuchadnezzar to come in and that's what he did. He took them captive and they were in captivity for 70 years. And look at what he did. He allowed them, he allowed Nebuchadnezzar to take some of the things, the sacred things from the temple of God. And he placed those things and put them in display in his pagan temple. Making a mockery of God. Listen, my brothers and sisters, because of our attitudes and actions, we see the world now making a mockery of God. And we want to cry out to God and say, how long and why God? But we need to stop and look at ourselves because God has already told us what to do. And number three, I want you to understand that God oftentimes uses evil people as he does here pagan leaders to discipline his own children. It is strange how God will allow someone evil and wicked to bring and to rule over his people. Nebuchadnezzar was the first one. He did it with Pharaoh. He did it with Cyrus. He did it with Darius. And God will do it again. And I want to tell you, yes, we find ourselves in that place under the chastisement of God. And listen, you got to be careful, my brothers and sisters, because I want to tell you there are consequences to your disobedience. Have I got a witness? And the truth is, it's hard, and I know it is, because we have so many sources in our lives that cause us trouble. And as I've told you before, the number one in person and source of trouble is my own self. And the truth is, I am my biggest problem. I am my biggest enemy. I don't know about you, but I cause myself more heartache, more pain, more grief because of dumb and stupid decisions that I make. But I got to tell you, the reason is because we still, my brothers and sisters, have something that's called sin. There's a sin nature that all of us have. And regardless of how you want to look at it, we all have faults, flaws, and failures. Have we got a witness there? I don't care how right you try to be. Because of the sin nature that we have, we all still have faults. As I told them on Wednesday, we're living in a broken world. With sin, in the end, it affected everything in this world, including me. And I have faults, flaws, and failures. And the truth is, we fail to look at ourselves. We want to blame everybody else. We want to put the blame on someone else. But the truth is, most of the problems we have, we cause ourselves. Because we gotta realize that we do have a sin nature. Paul made it clear in Romans 7 when he said, and I know that nothing good lives in me, that is in my sinful nature. Paul goes on to say, I want to do what is right, but I find myself doing what is wrong. I want to do what is good, but I find myself not doing what is good. I don't want to do what is wrong, but I find myself doing what is wrong. He said, I've discovered this principle of life that when I want to do what is right, I inevitably do what is wrong. He said, I love God's law with my heart, but there's another love power within me that is at war with my mind. He said, this power makes me a slave to the sin that is still within me. 
Paul goes on to say, what a miserable person I am. Who will free me from this life that is dominated by sin and death? But I want to tell you, God in his grace gives us the answer. And Paul says in the 25th verse, thank God. The answer is in Jesus Christ, our Lord. I want to tell you, my brothers and sisters, but the biggest problem is ourself. Then we have society. And it's this world that we're living in. First John 2 says, do not love this world and other things it offers you. For when you love the world, you do not have the love of the Father in you. For the world offers only a craving for physical pleasure. A craving for everything we see. And pride in our achievements and possession. He goes on to say, these are not from the Father, but are from this world. And I want to tell you, this society is engineered so because of the God of this world that it causes us to, and it distracts us from the presence and the principles and the plane and the plan of God. So you got to be careful, my brothers and sisters. We have so many things coming against us that causes us to fall under the chastisement of God. Not only do we have self sin, I mean self and society, but we also have Satan. Have I got a witness here? You know, many want to say the devil is not real, but I stop out to tell you the devil is real. First Peter 5 and 8 says, stay alert, watch out for your great enemy. And he says, the enemy is the devil. He said he prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. In other words, the devil is out to destroy you. Jesus said, the enemy comes not for but to steal, kill, and to destroy. But he said, I've come that you might have life and might have it more abundantly. Have I got a witness here? So we need to be reminded of the fact that yes, there's some things working against us, self, society, and Satan. Uh -huh. And someone said, if you wake up in the morning and you don't meet your, if you don't meet the enemy head on, then you and the enemy is going in the same direction. So I want to tell you, I ask you this morning, do you find yourself face to face with the devil? Or are you walking hand in hand with him? Have I got a witness here? And because of self, society, and Satan, we find ourselves, yes, walking in contrary to the word of God. And we find ourselves sometimes disobeying God. And yes, because of that, God has a standard and God allows, as he did with Nebuchadnezzar, he allows things to happen in your life. And I want to tell you, when you find yourself in a bad situation, when you find yourself, yes, in prison to the enemy and captive to the things of this life, I want to tell you now, as a child of God, you don't need to change your direction and your mind towards God. Understand, and you need to stop asking God, why me? Why me? But you need to know that God is with you. And what I want to tell you now is, yes, you may be under, yes, some problems, pain, and pressure because of sin and God's chastisement. Because, yes, there are consequences to the actions we take. And uh, yes, we find that yes, they lost what they had because they disobeyed God. But I want to encourage you as a child of God, you should never leave yes with your place in yes down and your face in the sand. You don't need to leave with your head down, but you need to leave with your head up. You need to look up to the hill from it coming to your help because God is still the source of our substance. He is the way, 
of our victory. He may allow Satan, uh, he may allow someone uh, and things to come in uh, as consequences of your sin, uh, but you need to know as a child of God that God still loves you with an everlasting love. And the only reason uh, he allows things in your life uh, is because he's trying uh, to get your attention uh, and put you back on straight street. Uh, God is concerned uh, about who you are. Uh, and you got to remember uh, that he loves you uh, because in the pain, uh, when you find yourself in pain, uh, you need to be reminded uh, of the love of God. And when you find yourself uh, under the pressure of sin uh, and the consequences of that sin, uh, you need to look up to God uh, and know that God loves you. Uh, and you can, if you trust him, uh, know he's going to work it out. Uh, I don't know how long uh, you got to stay in that place. Uh, but when you come out of that place, uh, you'll be where God wants you to be. And you got to learn uh, to trust him when you can't trace him. Uh, you got to learn uh, to hold on when you can't see him. Uh, ain't God all right? You got to learn uh, to listen when you can't hardly hear. And watch when you can't hardly see. Uh, and you need to remember uh, that God said uh, that he's always with you. Uh, and when uh, you trust him in your pain.
forgive you uh, to become your identity. Uh, have I got a witness? Uh, the Bible says uh, that yes, uh, the chief eunuch, uh, he took them, uh, he took Daniel, uh, Hananiah, uh, Michelle, uh, and Azariah, uh, and he changed uh, their name. Uh, he said, Daniel, uh, your Belshazzar, uh, Hananiah,
God warned them and warned them. Father, help us to not be like the nation. Let us heed your warning. Turn from our wicked ways and see your victory and see your power. We thank you, Lord, that even in the midst of it all, you chastise us because you care. That there are consequences and help us to understand that as children of God. You chastise your children in their disobedience. But you do it because you're trying to make us better and keep us safe. Help us to see your love and to trust your word. Bless now the hearers of this message, the people, Lord, that love you, those that are seeking you. And we ask, God, that you will let the light shine in the darkness of this world and in the face of those walking in darkness, that they will see the light and trust you as their Savior. Now, Lord, as we leave from this time together, we pray that you bless those that join in, that listen with us, Lord, those that's holding up the bloodstained banner, those that know you as Savior, those that seeking you as Lord, those that walk by God, I pray that you would touch and bless and keep. Keep us safe as our prayer. Keep us sane as we go. Give us wisdom to walk in the right way and make the right decisions. Light our path. Light our load. Shelter our storm. And we pray that you would do those things. Dismiss us now. From this place, not your presence. In Jesus' name we do ask it. Amen. And thank God.